Hartman, and I'm with Griffin Hammes Associates, and I'm just thrilled that you all have joined us today for a conversation of, um, with three amazing families um, whose um, family members have been working, um, but life has changed during this time of COVID. So uh, each of them will give their own perspectives and um, uh, we're looking forward to learning from them. I just want to remind you that uh, we welcome your comments and questions. Um, you can uh, put them in the chat box and um, I believe Dallas will help me uh, read those uh, when necessary or, or when useful. Um, if you would mute your um, computers, that's great, but um, feel free to use the chat feature to add those comments and questions. So if um, without further ado, let me introduce your panel to you. Um, and I'm just going to do it one person at a time. Um, first is Andy and his mother, Marla. Uh, those of you that have taken um, a, a customized employment training from me have, have met Andy um, because he was one of the first people to become employed through customized employment in Illinois. Um, it's wonderful that he and his mom are part of us today. I'm going to let you let them do uh, the talking about their life, but I did want to give just a few highlights, and that is that um, those of you that have taken the customized employment training know that social capital is such a big feature of customized employment. Well, Andy um, was introduced to the Kiwanis Club of Streeter um, through the executive director of Streeter Unlimited. And through that introduction, um, Andy has just taken it and run with it. Um, his employment specialist, Stephanie Harcharik, and our very own Beth Keaton worked uh, with, with Bill Walsh Auto Sales in 2009 to create um, a job for Andy, which in which Andy has been, I believe, promoted. Um, he, I, I know that he's added new job tasks. He's going to be on today, and we can ask him questions as well. His mom, Marla is a peer support leader for the epilepsy programs of Central and Northern Illinois, um, and, but she's also become quite the fundraiser for Streeter Unlimited. So I'll let uh, Marla talk, to, talk with you about that last bullet point. And at this point, Marla and Andy, take it away. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, Hi. And as it was first stated, um, when we were first asked to do the RISIS um, grant here in Street, I would sit in those meetings once a month and I would think this is never going to work in our small town. I, I heard about, you know, people in California and how they had popcorn carts and I thought this would never ever work here but I am now a firm believer after my son has been employed for 11 years at Bill Walsh. It is the most perfect fit. He loves his job. He loves going to work every day. Um, it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> He's made friendships. He um, helps coach uh, football and baseball, youth football and baseball here. Um, yeah. He's just grown. And, uh, Andy's not much of a talker. One of my favorite stories that I learned from Stephanie, um, Andy, is uh, do you remember the day you essentially fired her? You said, go on back to the office. We don't need you anymore. We've got this. <laughs> And that is every employment specialist's dream is to be fired um, because you did have it. You and your boss, is your boss George? George Risky, yeah. 
Okay, so you and George um, really hit it off. And um, one of the things that was so interesting about um, Andy was that his themes were around organization and hospitality and the all ever important sports, right? Sports was like number one, but how did sports bring Andy into Bill Walsh auto sales? Well, it's uh, George is a White Sox fan and I'm a Cubs fan. Uh oh. Yeah. So when I go back to work Monday, I'm going to be like, ha ha, the Sox are out. <laughs> <laughs> That was the, that was one of the ways that George and Andy connected right off the bat was that they were for opposing baseball teams in in Chicago. Um, but what I love about these pictures, Andy, not only is to see you 11 years ago like I know you, and then look at how you've changed <laughs> in this time and. Um, it, it's just it, an exciting, um, exciting story. It's very exciting sitting back now looking at customized employment of how other people see your child's um, strengths different than you see them. Like I, and I would never imagine that he could take a part that has a eight digit code on it and put it in a bin where it belongs. He can do things in alphabetical order. I mean, he can, yeah, it's just amazing. So, so having someone else look at you and say, you know he can do this, just give him a chance. <coughs> that, that, that is, as a parent, that is great. Thank you for adding that, Marla. Um, I think that the reason I put these two pictures up too was that Andy started out doing um, pretty simple putting parts away, um, cleaning up around the auto mechanics and doing uh, some cleanup in the offices. Is that correct, Andy? That's how you started? Yeah, that's but, uh, how I started. Okay, but it wasn't long before you got into that job that they taught you to do the computer, to do inventory. So I wanted to show how you have grown in learning new things in this job. Oops, okay. So at this point, and uh, Andy and Marla, would you like to talk to us about what the last six or seven months have been like and which, what's changed? Well, once um, here in Illinois, we had shelter in place for two weeks. Um, I didn't feel comfortable letting Andy go to work. And he works for such a great organization he's here in town there. that they had no problem with him. He was home for three months. We, three. we kept him home until June 15th. But now that he's back, he wears a mask. When he checks in parts, he wears rubber gloves. Um, constant hand washing. Um, we take all the precautions we can. Um, he goes to work and comes home. That's basically all we do. Yep. Tell me what it was like during those three months that you weren't working. Oh boy. <laughs> Bored. Bored. How did you try to fight that boredom? Uh, Play video games. Uh, what what did you what did you start doing and delivering to your friends? Oh, baking. He really? Started, yes. Ask Stephanie. He started baking. Yes, yeah, Stephanie. Cookies and we made homemade pretzels and he, he loved it and he would make up little plates and he would deliver them to Streeter Unlimited to Stephanie and okay. then to his other friends. We would get in the car. We would bake on a certain day, deliver on the next day, and that was our thing every week. Excellent. Marla, he, he is an excellent baker, but I couldn't wait for him to go back to work because <laughs> I was putting on so much weight from all these sweets that Andy was making. <laughs> 
That's that's a problem, huh? <laughs> um, I I thought it was fascinating during that time how it was difficult for people to secure flour, and um, for those many people that learned how to bake bread, that that was a big difference for for people. Well, Andy, that that was really creative, and I. How did that make you feel to bake and deliver? Well, happy. Happy. Uh, <clears throat> That's awesome. Spending time with friends. At least being able to wave to them, huh? Yeah. 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 Because Andy is very social. He he just, yeah, he's very social. Mm -hmm. That was one of the ways that Stephanie learned um, about Andy was one of the discovery activities was um, Andy pulling together a pay-per-view wrestling match on TV. And he invited friends over and Stephanie and her husband. And that's when we learned that this fellow that we kind of thought was quiet was not so quiet that when you got him at home and in a, a role of um, being hospitable, he shined. So that's how we we started to learn who Andy really was, really is. So Stephanie, would you like to add anything about the time off and how, how you know folks um, handle this time of being at home? Um, sure. Well, um, before March, before the shelter in place, I myself had never heard of, well, I had heard of Zoom, but I have never done it. So I learned how to do Zoom, and that has been the biggest thing now that we have introduced. We, um, like we said, Andy is part of our peer support for the epilepsy program. So we have weekly meetings via Zoom. Um, we get them to all the individuals that we're working with. We pull together meetings. Um, so it's something that, you know, before the COVID hit, you know, we didn't rely on it. And it's one of those things looking forward to the future that even after COVID is long gone and over, we are still going to be using this Zoom as a virtual way to keep in touch with each other. So I think that that definitely has been the biggest takeaway, um, you know, social media, the virtual meetings, that has been how we are coping the best that we can. Well, thank you. thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. Marla, did you want to add anything more? Um, just that, um, so when Andy was off for his three months, a lot of people who had the time off didn't get paid. But Bill Walsh actually, you know, paid Andy for the whole time he was off. So, wow. I mean, it was great so that he could budget and save his money and do what he still needed to do. So, when... I was sitting there in those meetings once a month thinking this is never going to work. It's not going to work in my small town. Now I want you to know it works. He's been there for 11 years. Last year was 10 years. So we had a food truck come and serve lunch to everyone at, at Bill Walsh. And um, last, I think it was last year at Streeter Unlimited, I actually, me and Stephanie put together a thing called Take Me Out to the Workshop. And we invited some of the big employers here in our town to come and tour Streeter Unlimited. And then we fed them a lunch and gave them a little going away present. And actually, a few people are um, looking to hire people from Streeter Unlimited. Wonderful. So I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, we, we <clears throat> should get our children out in the community and let them live their best lives. Thank you. And as I said, Andy took um, what he has um, grown with and run with. Um, I think it's pretty impressive that his membership with the Kiwanis, Kiwanis Club and, and weren't you on the board at one time, Andy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then you, you developed an after school reading program. And this was all from the guy that we thought originally was kind of shy and laid back. Um, so work makes a great big difference in his life and, and in his community's life. Um, but I, I'm, I'm really excited to hear about your baking because um, 
that sounds like it was really healthy for you um, to be able to bring some gifts to people around town and for you to see your friends that way. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Marla or should we keep on going? And I am going to look to Dallas to see if there's any comments. Uh, no comments so far. Thank you. Well, then let me take this opportunity to introduce Brian to you and um, his business, Hardback Yo-Yo, along with his mom, Joan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Joan was my teacher in how to gather a team um, to surround um, to surround the job seeker because she was the um, the the most fantastic mom I had ever seen to get parents uh, or get the school team on board where Marla didn't believe in customized employment and wasn't quite sure that it was, um, you know, that she had, she didn't know everything about Andy like she thought she did. Um, Joan knew, but she needed the school and all of the therapies that Brian um, benefited from to get on board with her. So, um, Rather than go through these different pieces, Joan, I'm going to ask you to, um, you and Brian, to talk about the road to hardback yo-yo and then um, moving into what it's been like these last seven months or so. Thank you. Uh, I started hardback yo-yo about 10 years ago. And uh, after I was uh, at during, just as I was start uh, at the end of high school, beginning of college. Um, I just, I wanted to kind of have a paying job that, that fit my needs, that fit my interests, including, uh, being, keeping the earth green and, mm -hmm. uh, and themes of ecology, reading and organization, because, uh, I love reading and I also, uh, um, and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, it was such a fascinating um, road to get to that point of identifying what your themes were, um, but they were pretty, pretty easy in some respects because you were such, you were so passionate about the environment and um, reading and organizing is your thing. So um, tell us some more about how Hardback Yo-Yo came to life. Well, we were at an art fair, right? And we saw we saw other other people do, I understand doing something similar to what uh, doing something like similar doing the creating uh, books or journals out of old books, and we thought that maybe we could borrow that idea and use it for yeah. our own, <laughs> right? So there were a lot of people at that booth, and I thought, hmm, a lot of people like this thing. It it sounded like something maybe Brian would like to do. So we gave them as gifts kind of to see, do the marketing, like what would be the reaction? And the reaction to the, to the idea was- Look, look at how young I look there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I thought about Andy too. Everybody's growing up. Everybody's getting bone structure. I think structure. this may have been my first year or something. I think so. It was, yes. Yeah. So um, it's interesting to see how you change even your uh, way of doing business. So um, um, it was during the recession when Ryan got a little spiel from his high school teachers, the sit down, you know, next year in transition, you're going to not only go to school, but you're going to have to have a job. And the case manager gave, gave us a copy of um, Time magazine that, talked about how nobody's getting jobs so it was like <laughs> oh well thanks you know now what are we supposed to do but so you know um kind of like my family calls themselves serial entrepreneurs even my nephews I think it's in his bio he says he's a serial entrepreneur so we once did a presentation of the Babar family tree and I said that's 
our family tree is the entrepreneurial family tree. So when was that? The Babari elephant? Yeah. When was that? It was that? a long time ago. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of the way I, I, I express it in the way we think of solving problems and finding employment that um, I just, my brain went into action like, well, he needs a job. Why don't we just create one? I didn't, I didn't pass go, but it turned out that for Brian, it really was a solution because also it, after um, creating this business, fast forward through going through the customized employment process for Brian to also um, parlay that with another part-time job, it was difficult to find Brian um, um employment in the workforce not not because it was um recession but just just because i mean he had he brian you have an associate degree um library like, technical assistant to be a library technical assistant finding library jobs you know like everybody says you need the biggest degree to get the lowest paying job i mean it, it's 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 hard to get jobs in libraries and even just to be a Shelver, it seems like you need an inside track for a very low paying job. And um, so anyway, it wasn't easy. It took a long time. And, and finally, you did get a job um, working at um, Luminati's. Uh, yeah, the, the, the offices of, of you guys probably if you're from the Illinois area or even beyond now have heard of Luminati's Pizza and, and we knew somebody who worked there who kind of put in a little word for Brian, which was nice. Uh -huh. And they created a custom job for Brian, but it, it wasn't tons of hours, but it worked for Brian. And, and uh, three hours a week, uh, three hours for one day a week. Yeah. So he enjoyed that. And it kind of was like an addition to the hardback yo-yo job. So we always kept thinking, what else can he do? What else can he do? And, um, and then you got another job from another like family business. Those kinds of jobs seem to be good for Brian, where he can make a really close connection to a local family business where he knows the people really well. It's called the uh, Carol's Cookies. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. A lot of delicious food. They both <laughs> happen to be in the same kind of industrial Don't park. Complex. Or not complex, but Similar. same, same yeah. area. Around the same area. And both jobs, what would you say required a certain kind of skill? How could you Organ describe? Attention and organization. Yeah, I would say. They're both uh, also repetitive jobs. Yeah, they both had like repetitive tasks or attention to detail. I, I never did tell you this, but a friend of mine who's in the hospitality industry um, had to stop into Carol's Cookies and pick up something for, you know, a, a different kind of a wedding that was coming up. And, and also that job, both jobs were eliminated with the pandemic because the job, the task that Brian was doing, they had to redo what they did to do business. Yes, with uh, my Luminati's job, I went into a warehouse and sorted packs of receipts and put them in boxes by date. But since uh, but there's not not since not many people are getting stuff at 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 at, uh, at Lou's right now, I I don't have it. There's no way for me to actually do the job. Right, they're keeping that that task in house in each restaurant instead of bringing it bringing them, to the mailing central. them to the corporate office. office and carol's had to start packaging their cookies differently so the interesting thing was my friend went into carol's cookies and she knew that we were um friends and she said um my son who was brian's manager really misses brian and i said he does i thought brian was sometimes challenging to him and she said well, that's what she liked about, that's what he liked about Brian. He wasn't just one of the guys in the factory. He always questioned everything. So, what well, did I question? You know, why do I have to do this? And why do I have to do that? And how come I can't do this? So sometimes that makes employment difficult. But in this case, um, he, he used it as a compliment. And I hadn't told you that. So I wanted oh, you to know thank you. that John, that Jeff, no, Jeff. Um, said that that he missed having you around. So why don't you talk a little bit about how you've had to? Everyone's using the word pivot, right? Uh, Isn't that right. What you want to or or it, you mean like a uh, uh, what's the word uh, uh, assimilate? Maybe. Okay. Okay. 
with with the pandemic? What what, what did we have to adapt? Change? Adapt. So, so Brian uh, joked because I put a big piece of paper up on the wall as if I was making a path plan for the t next two weeks. How are we all going to change our lives, and what are we going to do? Like, is it to take really good advantage of it? But the two weeks but, ended but, up and being six months. <laughs> After about after about six weeks, the tape stopped sticking and the whole darn thing fell to the floor. <laughs> so that, was, that was only going to be just for a short time. I know. So yeah, that was kind of a commentary. The right. tapes, the and tape I, uh, stopped sticking. Unlike you, Andy, Brian is not doesn't really crave a lot of socialness. Except what I realized is before this, I kind of thought Brian was maybe going to live by himself. And we were really working in that direction. And then I realized he needs someone to talk to all day long. Because I, I have so many facts and information on my mind that I just can't get out. I can't keep inside my head. I know. And I thought if he lived by himself, I I'll, I'll be just be talking to myself all day. I think so. So I, I started thinking like, Maybe I had the wrong idea just because he doesn't really seek social engagement. Living by your, himself maybe isn't the right thing because, you know, I was having to work from home, too, and I'd be like, I'm working. <laughs> you know, so he had to rethink a lot of that, too. So um, but but Brian said this was what did you say? He was, this feels like before I had my jobs. He really it's like the period in between the times what during the during the period in between when I ended college and, and before I got my Lou Malnati's job, like yeah. that several month period. Yeah, so he really started to appreciate having, even though they were little jobs, just a few days a week for a few hours, they really took up some bandwidth in his life. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was happy to know that he noticed that that really were the bookends to his schedule in his life. Kind of felt a little unended, you know, a little loose. Mm -hmm. And now that with the the pandemic, the only thing I really have that since I don't have any public shows to sell my products, uh, the only way to really get money from Hardback Yo-Yo is to uh, is to sell them through my which I currently have about 180 journals on there. Um, and uh, although I have been good at getting good enough sales on Etsy, it's it's wasn't enough for me to it's not nearly as much as it would be ha if had I had public shows uh, in this in person this year. Mm -hmm. and once I did once we did the bookkeeping, it ended up only just barely getting a profit. That was that was shocking to Brian because right. he was packaging those packages. I, like I had lots of, of of sales in the first half of the the year. And then once he did bookkeeping, I realized I didn't gain much of a profit. Yeah. You have become quite the business person to recognize those profit loss margins. Yeah. So I a well, one day show can be so different than each one of those packages, you know, don't don't add up. Don't make the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um I had put your business website address but i forgot to put etsy but folks can look you up um on uh, etsy it's a etsy.com slash shop slash hardback yo yo there you go okay thank you well i wondered um if you wanted to kind of guide us through these products as well um if, if you wouldn't talk to us, I, I know that those are journals that you've made, but maybe you could describe, um, Brian, to the folks on the, the call about what you do with the actual hardback covers. I, I have these old uh, hardback books. Usually they have a pretty attractive covers on. They're never blank, always hardcover, never paperback. I uh, put them in this uh, slicer, this machine guillotine, to slice the the uh, the spines off. Um, I have these mach other machines, which are hole punchers, to punch through the whole 
the whole sides and more that I also have a whole stack of white paper to put in between the the front and the pages of the actual book sent to have and uh, have the white stacks of white blank paper sandwiched in between the front and the beginning and endings of the actual book very good explanation thank you so and then I put in a uh, um, and I put in a, a, a library pouch uh, with my with my business card in there along with a stamped date of when I made the book kind of like an introduction return date <laughs> and your story and and a description and a, a description of of the of the story of my business story of Harbeck yo-yo and that was the homage to one of Brian's teachers who happened to have left the business world from marketing to be a special ed teacher who kind of looked over the product and said that's what was missing was the hook the hook to get people to say, ah, I want to know more about this kid. Mm -hmm. This young. Yeah. Um, I, I really appreciated having being a consumer of your product and having granddaughters that have um, really enjoyed those journals. Um, they're, they're quite fascinating. And you used some terms. Um, that I wanted to make sure we took note of because they relate back to how you got started with the business, how you had a pass plan to purchase that guillotine, is that what you called it, <laughs> of the spine, and, and a, a binding system, and I, I'm not sure what other... Um, Pro, what other technology you needed to purchase, but well, um, I, I, one of those pictures on there, the other picture is I have some other products that I sell, but only at shows. Uh, okay, I I we use a uh, use some map pick pick th those uh, pellets on there all come from when I when the pages were were pu were punched. How about that? I thought they looked like hole punches. Yeah, and we also cut out the. Uh, maps with the with the stencils to make it look like 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 flowers i call them bookcases oh that's right yes bookcases i encourage everyone to go to brian's uh website to check yeah, that out pun, right i'm sorry Not bookcase but bookcases it's a pun yeah. excellent excellent <laughs> i get it <laughs> that's awesome so mark so, just to write a pass plan which was the miracle of all miracles and i guess it's like a a little sneaky trick but it's it's i don't know i don't know why more people don't know about it but it's what has sustained us and it's sustained brian to continue to make money and have a, a healthy bank account that you know even when times are tough we can he can get a draw and be like a real business owner so if the business doesn't make money but he works hard he can still get a paycheck and sweet it's a sweet operation so excellent so brian during the pandemic time you didn't have access to as many books is that correct so that's why you did this um a kind of commercial on your website that if folks um, had books that they wanted to give to you that you could turn into journals that you would be open to that well I've always had I, I mean I I have gotten a lot of books even during the pandemic some well, okay I, we picked some up at people's doorsteps though that was nice yeah there you go okay that's what I wanted to hear yeah, that was something that Facebook marketplace and next door and people said they well they were all cleaning out people were doing that and so uh -huh. we noticed if they looked like good ones we know what are good ones and they you know we didn't want to pay a lot of money but some people said you can have them just look through them and take what you want remember when we went, yeah, we went to a little treasure hunt on people's doorsteps yeah. yeah okay so that was an activity that you were able to do to help help you through the pandemic well, was there anything else you guys wanted to add? Shop. Okay. Shop. Shop. There you go. Exactly. <laughs>
go to Hardback Yo Yo or to oh, Etsy.com shop. <laughs> I'm a good salesman. We call them ABC. Always be, always be closing. <laughs> always be closing. That from the entrepreneurial family. Exactly. Excellent. Yeah, my well, great grandpa, my really was he an, was yeah. my great grandpa was also an entrepreneur. Or, or, or my un, my uh, uncle on my uh, was Phil was he? I think a lot of people. A lot of people my family. My my uncle is also an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. He makes cool. signs. I, I find it fascinating that you call it uh, serial entrepreneurship. Um, to me, that would be histor historical or uh, passing it from generation to generation. But I learned something new. You're serial entrepreneurs. <laughs> I don't know when to let go and move on, right? Let the bad thing go. All right, we got to give time to Janice. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, um, Brian. It's been wonderful seeing you. And if you want to stick around, we may have some questions. But if you need to get going, I understand. Thank you. So, yes, I'd like to introduce um, Janice to you all, um, who is many things. Um, but she is today the mom of Sarah. And um, Sarah has two sisters. Um, Sarah start Sarah's story began when she left um, graduated from or yeah exited the school system with a job at McDonald's and as often happens um, the job ended um, so Sarah um, worked on and customized employment um, with the organization that Janice and four other um, families um, started an organization that was based on customized employment. And that organization's name is Total Link to Community. Um, Joan is a part of that as well. Uh, and Brian works with them sometimes, I think. Um, but in any case, um, Sarah went through the process of discovering personal genius. And when um, that discovery piece was finished, um, they, did, they put together a community action team. And that will be something that I think Janice will address for us as well, um, because it's something that um, has been brought back to life for people um, as a result of the pandemic and people losing jobs. So um, Sarah has been a customer. Oh, isn't that a fancy way to sm spell customer? Um, that's the French spelling. So Sarah has been a customer service rep at uh, ABT Electronics for several years now. And um, we're going to um, hear about her story uh, of working at ABT and what it's been like during the pandemic. But I'm going to try, but um, Dallas is my right hand guy here. I'm going to try to start a video. Um, this video ended up winning an award um, from Google and it really shows who Sarah is. So um, hang on, let's see if we can make this work. Is that showing up for you all? No? Okay, then Dallas, I'll stop sharing and um and there we go. Can you get into it now? Yeah, give me just one second. You bet. Okay, can you see that? Is it? Yes. You can see it. All right. Can it, okay. Let me, I'll play it and make sure the sound works. Hey, Sarah. 
brushes. My name is Ella. I'm 28 years old and I have Down syndrome. I love my life. And the one thing, I want to live on my own. I work at ABT and I love my job. The place was, it takes me to work, a door to door. I meet the customers at the Mission Ice to pick up counter. Hi. How you doing? At UPS, I have to scan the boxes to ship them out into the trucks. I work as an upstairs in the office doing paperwork, and I did a whole stack of the paperwork. I love to go bowling. I'm so good at it. I got a strike. It's fun to hang out with all my friends. I love to eat. I love to eat at the yard house. I love to eat at, at the hole in the wall. I love to eat a cheese burger. At the outside of work, I go book club twice a month. I'm reading Shuttle's Web. It's a good book to read. I do Michigan Theater because I love to act, and also I love to perform. I really love myself. What a terrific introduction to Sarah. And um, in a moment, um, we'll um, well, actually, how about now, Janice, do you want to get um, started about telling more about Sarah and what it's been like over these past few months? Sure. Can you hear me okay? Beautiful. Okay, okay. Um, so first, I would just like to say that um, the whole process of going through the customized employment training with Marcy, um, Joan and, and I are integral partners, warriors in this, in this work, um, really is why Sarah's at where she's at today. Um, I, I think I, I think I knew, I believed in customized employment, but I really lived and breathed it, um, with so many of the young people that are part of Totally to Community. Um, everything that we do really revolves around first finding them a meaningful role in the, in the, in their communities, in their home communities, that's based on making contributions and being paid for what they do. So um, Sarah's been working at APT for seven years. She works um, a short day. She works three hours a day, but um, everything really revolves around work for her. Um, so that includes, you know, the transportation. We live in an area where we have, um, we have pace, pace bus service, so Sarah uh, spends time on the bus going to, going to and from work. And um, so she's gone pretty much pre-pandemic from like 10 in the morning to I would say 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, she stopped working a couple weeks before the stay at home orders were invoked because she's um, someone who has a higher risk um, due to some respiratory issues that she has. So um, she's very social. 
Um, she takes a lot of pride in the work that she does. And for a while, I think staying at home was um, felt like a vacation <laughs> for her. Um, and then, you know, eventually we just, we had to find things for her to do that were meaningful and that kept her connected to a community. Um, and she's fortunate to have a lot of um, access to Zoom programs, which she seems to really enjoy. Um, and um, you can see that, you know, a routine for her is really, really helpful. Sarah um, requires uh, the use of her phone to keep herself on track or on schedule. Um, she can do a lot of things, but keeping track of time is, you know, something that she, she needs, requires support with. So that's something that I've had to work um, around with my schedule at home too, to make sure that if there's technical issues for her with things, um, that she can, she, had, she can come to me and I can help her. Sometimes there's issues with Wi-Fi in the house. Um, but she's doing a lot of Zoom programs and she's kind of reestablished some of her, um, just grown more in some of her areas of interest. She's especially passionate about theater and she's um, participating in a couple of theater programs. Through um, Zoom? Through Zoom, yeah. How about Zoom. that? I was yeah. going to ask you if you could tell us about the Zoom programs, but theater through Zoom, how awesome. It is, it is, it is. I mean, people, um, most of the young people that she's with, they, they're they accustomed to doing theater together. So I think it was an easy, it was an easy shift for them to do it on Zoom. Okay. Or, or Google Hangout, yeah, yeah. So, um, so Sarah's doing fine, but she will be home on indefinitely and, um, I think she's fortunate to be, to work for a, a company. Uh, Joan mentioned it, and um, I think um, this isn't uncommon for for us that our young adults do really well in family-owned businesses. And though Apt is a very large company, they probably have about two thousand employees. It, it's still a company that has a family feeling. Um, and so, though Sarah's tasks have been absorbed by other people in the company. Um, you know, they'll take her back when, when things are safer for her to get back to work. Could you, um, I have another, oh, okay. Could you tell us about the um, community action teams, um, both for that, how that worked with Sarah and connecting her to AB APT, um, but also you had mentioned um, in an email that you were reenacting the community action teams for folks now that they are looking at different um, positions. Yeah, sure, Marcy. I'm happy to do it. So, you know, the community action team is really an extension of that, that idea of social capital. Um, we held community action team meetings as part of our um, original uh, project with Griffin Hamas and with the Illinois Council on Developmental Disabilities, where we gather people together in the community um, who are the connectors, who know employers and who know um, key stakeholders in, in our communities. And then our young adults um, will invite people who know them really well to come to a community action team meeting. And at this meeting, um, Sarah, for instance, um, had a beautiful visual resume that was like a PowerPoint um, that Emily helped her put together. Emily Raming is actually our executive director now. And in this PowerPoint, she goes through the things, who she is, you know, the things that make her who she is, what she's interested in, the work experiences that she's had, um, the skills that she has, um, and, then um, the, the three to five vocational themes. And this is terrible, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what Sarah's themes were, but um, I think hospitality was, was another one. Um, and so it was at this community action team meeting that um, one of our, um, someone who knew Sarah in the community made a connection to her through a friend of hers um, that all actually owns Apt, 
And so Sarah went in for a tour and based on a common interest, she, she had a, she had a connection right away um, with one of the owners who, because they're both Cubs fans. Um, but I think the reason, she really, the reason she really fits in there though is because of the strength, um, the cultural fit with um, customer service. So APT has, um, has in many different places throughout the store, it says, um, the answer is always yes to any reasonable request. So you can see that theme playing out with all of their employ employees. They, um, um, that's something that they really look for. And that's, that's, I think, one of the reasons that Sarah has been so successful at APT. The culture of the company, the family togetherness. Um, so anyway, we have we we ended up doing working collabor collaboratively with um, the Illinois Department of Rehabilitative Services um, with a supported employment contract. And in that contract, we do things um, based on what our customers, our, our young adults, tell us that they'd like to like to work towards in terms of goals. Um, and so for, I think just because we had a couple different projects going on, we, we, we were not using the community action team meetings as much. Um, but now, um, we have continued to try to find, um, young adults leaving the school system jobs. So we're still, you know, using the customized employment model to do that. And we also have people though who have lost their jobs. So similar to Brian, um, some of our smaller employers have not been able to keep all of their employees. And so we're using community action team meetings again, and they're virtual, they're on Zoom. And in some ways I think we're more successful, we'll be more successful with them now because it's just easier, um, it's just so easy to jump on you know, your computer and, uh, and on Zoom to participate in those calls. But our team at Total Link has been very innovative and creative in bringing um, some of our other stakeholders, like for instance, Northbrook Rotary Club uh, members are, are joining part of the community action team meetings and we're really engaging businesses that have already benefited from hiring um, and really focusing on diversity and using people's strengths to um, make that business stronger and better. Awesome. Now, you had mentioned that um, Total Link had made 120, created 120 jobs for people. How long has Total Link been an entity? How long have we been an entity? I, um, Joan, we sat around your your, your your dining room table for a while, didn't we? And then um, it, we began our work in earnest when we got the um, funding from the Illinois Council. And I think that was in 2012. Okay. So yeah, since that time, um, you know, we have, um, we've become accredited with the Council on Quality and Leadership, which is another wonderful organization. And then we have contracts with um, the Department of Rehabilitative Services. We have a supported employment contract. And then we're also actually um, one of, I think, five agencies that are part of a pilot customized employment project in Illinois. Um, and, and, St so, and Streeter Unlimited is one of those projects. Okay, okay yeah. yeah. So, um, which is really wonderful. You know, t uh, change takes time. It has taken time to, for us to work with re uh, DRS to, to really focus on hiring people whose support needs are more complex um, and who still weren't, their needs, their gifts were not coming out in the process of supported employment. Um, so we've been doing it since 2012 and um, we're just, we're just really, really making um, changes. And it's awesome to hear that you have um, Rotary Club members now part of your um, um, part of your community action teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's a labor of it's a labor of love, but it's um, it, but it, it, it doesn't work if we're not all partners. I would say that's really the key that we we have learned mm -hmm. in all this work is we all have to work together. 
Well, I want to thank each of you um, for your stories and um, Andy and, um, uh oh, did I, okay, I need to quit sharing. There we go. Uh, that's what I meant to do. Hello, everyone. Again, it's good to see you <laughs> in your faces. Um, I'm really glad to see that a couple of my colleagues are on um, with us today because they've been working with community action teams around the around the nation. And I'm glad that they could have heard um, your stories um, for each of you, because that's how each of you all um, started your businesses or got your jobs was through social capital. But it sounds like it's through that social capital that each one of you is able to um, make it through these um, unprecedented times. Um, I forgot the word that uh, Brian already said, but um, are, are we on? Oh, we're pivoting. That's right. As we pivot. Um, are there any questions? Oh, I see someone saying um, fantastic stuff. So thank you very much for that. Oh, it's Corey Smith. Thank you, Carrie. Corey. Um, are there any other questions or comments from those of you that joined us? We are so glad that you joined us and uh, look forward to your questions in the future if you don't have them today. Um, hope you'll look up a couple of these businesses or agencies. The thing that I wanted to say about Total Link to Community mm -hmm. is that where Andy was the first person that I'm aware of in Illinois to get the customized job, Total Link was the first agency that started with customized employment. And we, th we think that that was such a, um, such a, a marvelous novel idea because people that came to um, their employment and came to them for services knew that they were going to be getting customized service. They weren't customized employment. It wasn't that um, people had to be trained on a different employment strategy. So that was um, particularly um, particularly important and I want to give them a lot of credit for that because uh, that was pretty big and um, Stephanie was reminding me that in 2008 when we started um, working um, working on cu bringing customized employment to Illinois through the rural Illinois customized employment grant um, with Illinois Council on Developmental Disabilities, we had to work really hard to get um, Division of Rehab Services on board. So the fact that they put put out um, this this um, proposal and this project for Total Link to Community and Streeter Unlimited to expand on customized employment is just huge. And I'm so thrilled about that for you all. So is there any, are, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, if I'm missing something, I wanna thank um, my right hand guy, Dallas Yates for always putting um, the websites in the chat section for you to refer to and just for always being so awesome is does anyone else have any questions or comments thank you i just saw this is really interesting you know um now that i'm off of my presentation um that i'm getting an email and this one is really really important for all of you guys um Lil lilia tenanty remember her at dds or or ddd um is, is she in oregon yeah oregon oregon just closed their last sheltered workshop and that was Yay. i know yes how about that so way to go lilia um, she she did work in Illinois and we appreciated what she did what I think um, what she was working on when when I was working with her was closing the um, helping to close the state um, operated developmental centers 
I think that's what I, what she was working on. But in any case, that's hooray. So way to go, Oregon. And um, let's, let's make Illinois next. But all of you that are joining us today, we hope this has been helpful. Oh, I see my friend Pam is on. So um, thank you all for joining in. And uh, send, it, send me any questions or comments you might have. But thank you, Marla, Andy, Joan, Brian, Janice, and that ever smiling Sarah. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Marcy.